Hello, everyone. My name is Shi Jiexu. Nice to meet you all at Black Hat. Today, I will introduce our new researches with my colleagues, Jian Yang Song and Lin Shuangli, about the Windows Common Log Biosystem. Our topic name is The Next Generation of Windows Exploitation Attacking the Common Log Biosystem. Recording in progress. This is our self-introduction. We are security researchers from Qihu Vulnerability Research Institute, and here is our Twitter. We are currently main focused on the Windows platform bug hunting. Here is our agenda. I will introduce some background knowledge about common log file system. Then I will share how we fast this target and I will pick two classic cases for vulnerability analysis. Jian Yang Song and Lin Shuangli will show you how we used a new method to exploit the TF cop vulnerability. First, what is common log file system? This content is expert from MSDN. The common log file system is a new logging mechanism introduced by Windows Vista which is responsible for providing a high performance universal log file subsystem that dedicated silent applications can use. Multiple silents can share to optimize log access. Any user mode application that needs logging or recovery support can use common log file system. We can create or open a log file with the create log file function. The log can be dedicated or multiplexed, and that depends on the log file name. You can use the close handle function to close the log. We can get the function of the operation log by querying MSDN, or we can get the OP code by reversing the CLFS system driver. Before starting our research, we checked out some great resources from Alex, Unisco, Ken Lab, and Cisco Talus. Their research can give us a faster understanding of this new attack surface. Based on the previous research, we can summarize the following two attack surfaces. First is log file parsing vulnerability in CLFS system driver, and second is error handling of file code vulnerability in CLFS system driver. So we did research on the BLF file format. This is the structure of a base log file, and we can find the location of the structure in the created BLF file. After analyzing the file format, we consider how to fuzz it. The design idea of our fuzz is very simple. Just create a log, random log file data by structure, and parse log file data. First, we need to create a log, which can be achieved through the create log file function mentioned earlier. And log files are divided into dedicated log files and the multiplex the log file. There are also some functions for container operations in the log. So we can also choose whether to add a container or not. By reverse the CLFS system driver, we can find that there is a CRC check whenever the BLF file is parsed. The following is the studio code. So we need to bypass this check before random file data. Reverse the CLFS system driver. We can find that some functions starting with gate and acquire will read data from the BLF file, such as gate base log record, gate control record, 
acquire mental data block, acquire trace content, and so on. So we mainly randomize this structure when fuzzing. This structure is reversed by in IDA. After random log file data, we need to call some functions to parse the log. We can know from MSDN that there are the following types of functions. Log storage, record chains, reservation, log achieve, and restore. There are also some types of operation functions can be found in MSDN or reverse in CLFA system driver. So I don't list them all here. In summary, our, firstly, our father creates a BLA file of a random type. Secondly, randomize the BLA file in the, the content according to the structure we mentioned earlier. Then we bypass the CRC check and finally call some functions to read the file content for operation. After fuzzing for a while, we got some crashes. I will analyze two of them. The first vulnerability is related to the CLFA's control record structure, which is located at the BLA file offset 0x70. We can find the three fields E extension state, I extension block, and I flash block according to the offset in the CLFA's control record structure. These three fields are marked in the red blocks here. E extension state fields identifies the current extension state for the file. In this case, we say it's true, which means CLFS extend state flashing block. Setting it to true is for the program to reach the vulnerable function, shift mental data block descriptor. I extension block field identifies the index of the block being extended. In this case, we say it to four. I flash block field identifies the block being flashed. In this case, we say it to three. The root cause of the vulnerability is that when the shift mental data block descriptor function parses the BLA file, the I extension block and I flash block fields are not well checked, resulting in a specially constructed BLA file that can lead to an out of bounds vulnerability. And you can see an out of bounds vulnerability will occur here when I flash block is used as index. We submit this vulnerability to MSRC and obtain CVE 2022-21916. The second vulnerability appears in the CLFS log FCB physical overflow reversal function. This function is mainly related to the owner page operation. The CCLFS base file high watermark silent ID function obtains the silent ID in the BLA file, and the silent ID is obtained by subtracting one from the C next silent fields in the CLFS base record header structure. We can still modify it in the BLA file. When it is modified to a special value, it will be used as a wrong index, resulting in an out of bounds vulnerability. The picture here is the C next silent we found in the file. An overflow occurs when the silent ID is greater than 0x70. In summary, this is a pro-overflow vulnerability with a page pro size of 0x1000 
which writes CLFS LSN in value and uh, old owner page data to the head of the next pool. Next, my colleague Ling Shuangli will introduce how we use new method to exploit this vulnerability. Hello everyone, my name is Lin Shuangli. Last, let me introduce a universal message for the Windows Patched Pool Overflow Exploitation. The currently loading Windows Patched Pool Overflow Exploitation methods are as followed. One is the WF. By overflow corrupting the state data of the WF limits the structure, we can we can achieve the goal of restricted arbitrary address read and write. The other is the named paper. By overflow corrupting the flink point of the paper attribute structure, we can only achieve the goal of arbitrary address read. The exploitation of the WNF had some limitations. The size of the WF name instance is 0xc0 or 0xd0. This vulnerability is a poor overflow vulnerability with the poor with the patched poor set of 0x1000. So we cannot allocate the WF name instance structure with the set of 0x1000. So we can only we can only overflow the WF data data structure of the set 0x1000. By overflowing the allocated set allocated set field of the WF data data structure, we can reach an out of bounds rate in the maximum range of 0x1000 set. But we still can not achieve the goal of the arbitrary address right. So we also need to find a 0x1000 set patched poor structure and then overflow some of its fields to achieve the goal of the arbitrary address right. I found a good exploit structure in the Windows ARPC. By overflow corrupting the handle point of the ALPC handle table structure, we can achieve the goal of arbitrary address read and write. Last, I will introduce the ALPC handle table structure. A resolve block can be created by calling the NTALPC create resource resolve function. Whenever a blob is created, the ALPC at the handle tables and entry function will be quoted to rest the address of the created blob to the handle of the handle table. The most important part of the ALPC handle table structure is the handle fields. When the ALPC port is created, the ALPC initializes the handle table function is called to initialize the handle table. The handle is the padded pool with the initial size of 0x80, which stores the address of the blob structure. As more blobs are created, the size of the handle doubles. And the size of the handle is, uh, is variable. By overflow corrupting the KLPC resolve, po resolve point of the handle structure, we can construct a fake resolve blob. And the KLPC resolve structure stores the Stories the uh, message. So we can continue to construct uh, the fake key LPC message structure. 
And uh, when you call, call the NTLPC send weight receive port function to send a message, it will write the data passage in better user to the address pointed to better extension buffer in the KLPC message structure. We can use it to achieve arbitrary address rights. And uh, when you call uh, NTLPC send weight receive point quarter function to receive a message, it will read the data at the address pointed by the extension buffer in the KLPC message structure. We can use it to achieve arbitrary address rate. And the whole process of achieving the goal of arbitrary address read and write is as follows. First, by overflow crafting the KLPC resolve, resolve point of the handled structure, we can construct a fake resolve blob. The KLPC resolve structure stores the address of the message. So we can continue to construct a fake KLPC message structure. And then we can achieve the goal of the arbitrary address read and write through the extension buffer field and the extension buffer set field in the KLPC message structure. And last, my colleague Jian Yang Song will continue to in introduce how to exploit this vulnerability. Uh, hello everyone. Let me introduce how to combine WF and LPC and uh, finally achieve privilege escalation. First, uh, we can call the NT update WF state date to spray a lot of 0x1000 WF structures and then make sure they are land in memory. Then we need to call the nt delete WF state name function, creating a lot of memory pause. In the third step, we need to create the owner page, which is the vulnerable pool block. We only need to call create log file. But if you open a dedicated BRF file, it will not call the overflow referral. You need to create a special BRF. Here, I will briefly say, is to create a multiplexed log file. Then you need to write a lot of records to the container. When the length of the written content exceeds 0x75000, uh, it will automatically generate an owner page. Next, uh, you open the BRF through create log file, and it will call the overflow referral. Uh, Okay, back to the exploitation part. When the overflow referral is called, the function will do an out of bounds write to the owner, owner page pool, which will overflow the WF. As can be seen from the picture on the, on the right, before the overflow of WF, the value of WF is normal. After overflow, the allocated size of WF is overflowed to 0x4ff, and the header is overflowed to zero. But this does not affect the normal work of WF. Then we need to create handles. Why create handles? Because the block size of WF is 0x1000 and uh, its out of bounds wide size limit is also 0x1000, not counting the 0x10 header structure at the beginning of the WF structure, 
it will start waiting from the offset of 0x20. So we can only wait the next block into bits of length 0x10. So we need a point to access in the first 16 bits of the structure of the next block. So that we can overwrite the pointer through WF to achieve arbitrary read and weight. So we found the structure of handles. All members of this structure are pointers. You can see the picture. Uh, the size of the pool is controllable. Uh, so we allocate uh, handles of size 0x1000 to the whole of WF. We call NT update WF state date to overflow the WF block. You can see the position marked by the blue box. We overwrite the first pointer member of handles with the user mode address, which is the ARPC resource structure we fixed in user mode. Here is an introduction to the ARPC structure uh, and the key code. We can see that the structure of ARPC reserve is very simple. We need to fix a message structure at offset 0x18. We overflow handles, call ntRPC send with receive port, then our fake address will be referenced in the ARPC lookup message function, which will find our fake address in handle table through message ID. Then the ARPC reference block by handle function will return a fake reserve structure whose message member is also the structure we fixed in user mode. Here is an introduction to the key part of faking the LPC message structure. We need to add the token address to the 0x0 offset of the structure. So the extension buffer actually points the token address. How to leak the token address? We can call NT query system information, which is already an open technology. So I won't go into details. Finally, we can call NT RPC send with resolve port to write the message content to the RPC port. And eventually, it will go to LPC capture message data save and write the content that our user can control into the extension buffer point, which points to the token address. As you can see in the red picture, the privileges of the token has been overwritten to 160XFF. Finally, we achieved the elevation of privilege using proc XP to view the permissions of the XP process. We have obtained the C debug privilege permissions, a permission, and then we inject shellcode into the Vlogon process. And finally open a CMD process with system permissions. Here is the demo video we recorded.
Okay. In this part, we will talk about why this structure are universal. We have involved three structures in total. Namely, WF handles and message. They all have one feature. That is, they can be controlled in size. After our test, they can be adapted to the matching range is the minimal 0x30 and the maximal 0x11,000 or more. And this three structure can be used alone or in combination. According to our test, all three structures are available in sizes 0x30 to 0x1,000. Handles and message can be used when greater than 0x1,000. Greater than 0x11,000 can be used handles. The three structures are described in detail below. First, introduce WF. It says range from the 0x30 to 0x1000. And it has a limit of 0x1000 for out of bounds rights. But this is enough to adapt to a large number of poor flow vulnerabilities. We only need to modify the size of the allocated size of the WF structure. Throat overflow or poor overflow or out of bounds white to use WF to perform out of bounds white. And modify the data size to achieve out of bounds read. Then the handle structure matches the range 0x90 to very, very large. But there is a rule for handles. That is, the size is 0x80 at the beginning, plus the pool header is 0x90. Then 0x80 multiplied by 2 equals 0x100. Then multiply by 2, and so on. Therefore, it, it is necessary to observe whether the used block size matches when adapting. The use of handles is very flexible. Even if you write an invalid value to the handles, there is a still chance to use it successfully. Because you can call the virtual alloc to map this invalid value to a user mode address. And then you can fig ARPC reserve. At this step, it was basically successful. The last is the message structure. It matches in the range 0x160 to 0x11,000. We can overwrite the extension buffer of the message into a token or other address through the overflow or out of bounds writing, and then call the ntlpz send rate reserve function to, or, uh, to write to any address. Fire passing vulnerability similar to CRF is still a good attack surface to this day. Evol evolving mitigations on Windows making exploits harder and harder. Here are the links to our references Thank you for your contributions.